Today, we're going to get a little bit meta in the sense that we're going to be learning about optimal studying strategies and applying those as we go through this podcast. And no, there will not be a test at the end. I'm going to provide you with an excellent zero cost, very fast tool that you can use to evaluate your knowledge and your ability to study and learn better as a consequence of having listened to this podcast. So if ever there was an incentive to listen to the end, there it is. Some people don't have great levels of focus and attention. And there are, of course, pharmacologic tools. I would encourage anyone that has clinically diagnosed ADHD to talk to their doctor about whether or not they should use prescription meds and or other methods. Great sleep is always going to be an important substrate for attention and focus for anybody. I highly encourage anyone that's interested in enhancing their levels of focus and attention to also consider the non-pharmacologic approaches. Yes, being well hydrated. Yes, the appropriate amount of caffeine for you that allows you to be alert, but not, you know, shaking and agitated can be very useful. However, the scientific data also support the fact that doing a brief, say, five to 10 minute mindfulness meditation each day, these are the data from Wendy Suzuki's laboratory at New York University, showing that people who do a 10 minute meditation per day where they simply sit or lie down, close their eyes, focus on their breathing, their attention invariably drifts, they bring their attention back to their breathing. People who do that on a regular basis improve their level of focus, they improve their memory and recall ability, and of course there are a bunch of other positive effects of that simple zero cost tool of mindfulness meditation. So if you're interested in improving your levels of focus and attention for sake of learning, I highly encourage you to explore the oh so valuable tool of mindfulness meditation, just five or 10 minutes per day done on a regular basis. You miss a day, no big deal, just get right back to it the next day. Does it matter if you do it morning, afternoon, or night? No. Some people find that doing it too late at night might disrupt their sleep, but if you think about meditation of the sort that I just described as a perceptual exercise, maybe you don't even call it meditation, you're just teaching yourself to focus. You could even do it with eyes open by focusing on a visual target, allowing yourself to blink. There are good data on this sort of approach as well. And then just making sure that your visual attention and cognitive attention comes back to that visual target over and over again. It's a deliberate process of bringing your attention back to a particular location. That is very valuable for improving your levels of focus. In fact, it is known to create significant improvements in your ability to focus, which is critical for your ability to study and learn. Right now, however, I wanna talk about the second part of neuroplasticity, which is that the actual changes in the nervous system, the strengthening and weakening predominantly of connections between neurons that underlie learning do not occur during the focusing and learning, or rather the exposure to the material, but instead during deep sleep and sleep-like states. So make sure that you're getting enough sleep for you. For some people it's six hours, for some people it's eight hours. And yes, there is something called the first night effect. The first night effect is the experimentally observed phenomenon whereby information that you learn on a given day is mostly consolidated during the night sleep that you have on that first night after the learning occurs. Does this mean that if you get a poor night's sleep on the first night after learning something that you are forever going to forget that information, that it cannot be consolidated into your neural circuits? No. However, it's very clear that the first night after learning, you want to get the best sleep possible. So if your learning bouts, your studying is going late into the night and you're drinking a lot of caffeine, be mindful that the sleep that you get after drinking that caffeine late into the day the all-nighters that you're pulling, those are not serving your learning well. So you need to structure your life as a student of any kind so that you can get focus and attention to what it is you want to learn and you can get sleep to the best of your ability. And of course, people who are raising young kids or who have stress in their lives for whatever reason, perhaps won't be able to optimize their sleep on that first night or even subsequent nights, but do your best to get your sleep right. It's the single best thing you can do for your mental health, for your physical health, and for learning and performance of any kind. And it's really worth the effort. 